Now we're going to add our model classes and to our application, and I'm going to provide those for you. So if you go to the course webpage at ezekiel.vancouver.wsu.edu slash squiggle CS224, if you look under Minesweeper, you're going to see there are four files for two classes. There's cell.h and cell.m for the cell class, which will represent a a cell in our minefield, and then we have minefield.h and minefield.m, which represents our entire array of mines in our minefield. So go ahead and download those. And I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and add them to our project. So if we got them downloaded, I'm just going to drop them right in here in the in the Xcode. Make sure when you add add them that you select both the copy items into the destinations group folders and you s and add to the targets minesweeper so we definitely want this to build these to build with when we build minesweeper and we do, we want these actually copied into the application bundle so go ahead and say finish and you'll see those will be pasted in so so you're going to see a cell is going to represent a single cell in the minefield. So you'll see some of the, some of the various um, instance variables that are in a cell. There's a, there's a Boolean that says whether the cell contains a mine, a cell um, rec that record, it records whether that's been exposed or not by the user, um, whether it's been marked as having a flag or not, and another, another um, value that tells the number of adjacent mines in, in its eight neighbors. And so, and then there's an initialization for when the cell is first created. And but these properties will essentially be read-write by the by the user. So, and you'll see in minefield.h, you're going to see that it the minefield is just going to be an array of cells, and it's going to record the the number of mines, the number of exposed cells. And there's also a Boolean called Kablooey, whether the, the user's blown up the minefield. And you're going to see there's a variety of methods here for initializing the minefield, um, querying its width and height, which is the width and height of the minefield itself, um, for fetching a particular cell at a particular row and column, for resetting um, when, you, when you want to start a new game. Um, returning the number of unexposed cells, and there's a routine for actually exposing a cell at a particular row, which we'll actually call this other routine called auto expose cell at row, which we can talk about later. So anyway, so so my, a minefield, like we need to be able to create a new a minefield when the user starts up. So there's a variety of ways we could do this. Um, probably the easiest place to do it is to go into my controller and if you remember last time, what we did is we put an instance of my controller in the nib file. So if you if you remember in the nib file, we actually made an instance and freeze dried it and put it in the nib file. And so what we would like to do is when the nib when that my controller instance that we created is dearchived out of the nib file, I would, would like to do a little bit of extra initialization. Well, there's a handy little routine that you can override called awake from nib. So I'm going to add in the code um, awake from nib. And this is a great place to actually um, do any extra initialization once the the object has been deserialized out of the nib file. So this is actually a good place to actually um, create the minefield. So I'm actually going to go into the, the header file and I am going to add a, a property for the minefield. First I'm going to I'm going to import I'm going to import the minefield.h and which will automatically import mine the cell.h file as well. So I'm going to add a property and I'm going to make this a strong property and and, um, and I'm going to I'm going to so I'll call it minefield. 
So there. So all right. So we're going to create a new. So that's going to be our property that's going to hold our minefield and the controller. So I'll have the controller actually create the minefield. So we got to remember to synthesize its setter and getter methods. So there we go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set that in awake from nib. So I'm going to say mine, minefield, minefield, and I'm actually going to go ahead and, and create it. And I'm going to and it's going to ask for um, the width and the height and the number of mines that we're going to have here. So if you remember, we need when we created our initial beginner minefield, it was a, we had 10 cells by 10 cells. So I'm going to just go ahead and make sure this agrees with that. So I'm going to hardwire this for now. Just make the width and the height 10. And you can, you can set in some simple number of mines. So th since this is a beginner level, we'll just throw in 10 mines. So there'll be 10 mines amongst 100 different cells that are in there. So, um, So there's so so when our applications pulled out of the out of the uh, nib file, that minefield will automatically be be created. So that's how we're going to create our model object. And let's go ahead and implement a few things in our action methods. So um, for instance, let's let's look at minefield clicked. And let's look at that. So one of the things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to know what was the what was the row and column that the user clicked in the minefield. So if you remember, this is this is going to get clicked every time the user selects a button cell in our minefield. So so what I'm going to do is I want to figure out what's what's the row and column of that. So I'm going to go ahead and say sender. I'm going to send a message. Selected row. So when a user clicks on a matrix, because remember the, the it's the matrix that's actually sending a message to the controller here. And what what happens is one of the, the button that was clicked becomes selected. So what I want to do is I want to figure out what, what was the row and column of the selected cell. So I'm going to go ahead and, and fetch those. Selected column. So I'm going to get the, go ahead and get the selected row and the selected column. Now if I actually want to retrieve the actual cell, right, which is an NS um, button cell, I'll call it V cell, what I can, I can do is I can say sender, send me the selected cell. And now I have the selected cell. And similarly, if I want to get these the cell out of the minefield, um, I'm going to go ahead and call my minefield object and get the cell at row R, column C. Now what we can do is log this information. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take my log message from above, paste it down here, and I'm going to go ahead and, and let's see, minefield click, let's go ahead and I'll write the row and column that was clicked. So, so the minefield is clicked. So they will get the row and column. Uh, right now I'm not doing anything with the cell. We could, we could actually, for example, um, determine the number of the number of neighbors. Say we wanted to say um, adjacent the number of adjacent mines. So I, I could get that um, cell and number of surrounding mines, and we could print that as well. And let's start with that. Now ignore this warning, we're not really using the button cell yet, but you're going to want to use that later. So just to show you that this is working, let's go ahead and, and, and build our application at this point. Um, we got a warning for an unused variable, that's okay. So you see now when I click on my cell, you can see there um, 
that cell was actually clicked and the number of surrounding mines that it has. Okay, so you can see there are not many, not many mines in this field. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and stop. And, and I'll go ahead and, let's see, what else we wanna do? Let's see, um, let's say the, the user selects the level what are we going to want to do here? So we're going to want to figure out what cell. Eventually, we're going to resize the. We're going to want to resize the the field probably. So let's go ahead and find out the the index in the menu that was selected. So I'm going to say sender index of selected item. And, I'm, and for now, I'm just going to go ahead and print level selected. I'm going to say percent %d and just print the index. So now you'll notice when you run, when I select a different level, you'll see that I can select, I'll get a different value. Now I'm not doing anything with it yet, just showing you that I'm responding, responding to that. We, we can, we're still responding to the user creating a new game. So anyway, so this should get you bootstrapped. So now you've got your initial view, and we've got the, our controller, and now we've got a model. So you might want to kind of study the header files for both the cell and the minefield to understand how they're used. And so we'll go ahead and stop there for now.